Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, Doug Zerta, podcaster of beer and the daddy blogger extraordinaire, he's going to hate me for saying it that way, joins us as we talk tech, apps, and more Awesome Cast. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast 190. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to get geeky, get technical with you? Yeah, we might be. We might be. We, we, we've kind of been skewing that way the last few weeks. Uh, with me uh, today is is uh, two guys on the couch. Comfortably next to each other on the couch is first of call first of all as usual john should chilla at chilla on the twitters how you doing sir pretty good how are you excellent excellent and back on the show we're trying to figure out you might have joined us three years ago have we been doing this show for three years we are at episode 190 i think it was around 75 for some reason i don't know i don't know why that's sticking out 75 is sticking out like episode 75 yes wow uh, Doug Durda at <laughs> Douglas Durda on the Twitters. Should I drink that dot com blog or I'm sorry, podcasting extraordinaire and now featured <laughs> blogger extraordinaire. Thanks to an article uh, that's just popped up on daddy bloggers, actually. So, so tell us a little bit about about uh, uh, about what you got featured in here. Well, uh, the first requisite is you have to have a kid, I guess. OK. And uh, since I have two, they, th- they thought I was qualified and. I have a blog too, I guess, that I update once in a while, and somebody somewhere saw that I, I wrote about my kids and said, "Hey, let's put this guy in an article because he's picture. from Pittsburgh." Best picture, by the way. <laughs> Give your own video there, and this is on nextpittsburgh.com. Yes. So, so uh, Marty, who's the gentleman who wrote the article, uh, got a hold of me and said, "Hey, I was uh, checking out Pittsburgh Daddy Bloggers," and right away I said, "Stop! Don't call me a daddy blogger. Call me a dad blogger. I don't like daddy blogger for some reason." And uh, he said, "Hey, you know, it's we want to. I just want to talk to you for a little bit. Let me know what you do. Let me know about daddy blogging stuff like that." And uh, I told him, "It's I have a general blog at DouglasDurda.com, and I talk about beer. I talk about Pittsburgh. Talk about jagoffs. And I talk about being a dad. And uh, since I was laid off recently, I have a lot of time to be a dad. <laughs> kind of from the time I wake up in the morning till the time I go to bed at night." And I guess he uh, he thought some of my stories were pretty funny. He thought some were pretty serious too, and said, "Hey, let's uh, let's see what we can do with this." Mm-hmm. And it kind of just took off from there. I know. I know. One thing you brought tonight, we'll get into a little later, is uh, <laughs> is is directly from uh, the from from your blog. I remember the story. It's one of my favorite toys in the world. Awesome. And so, I, I it's very awesome, and I encourage every parent to own one. And of course, uh, like I mentioned, blo- uh, I'm sorry, I keep wanting to say blo- podcasting extraordinaire. What should I drink that? You've joined us on uh, podcasts before. Uh, we first met at the first pod camp. <laughs> we did. I, I, in fact, I remember the moment that we met. Uh, myself and my co-host Sick Puppy were walking around, kind of wandering aimlessly. So we had no idea what we were doing there and who anybody was. And filmmakers was kind of cavernous. Yes, you, you could get lost pretty easy there. But we saw a wall of meat. There was like an art display of meat, so we were kind of gravitated towards it because it had bacon. I'm like, all right, this is going to be a good way to go. And then Kanaki saw us wandering around. He's like, you know what? You're the beer guys. You'd be really good with the wrestling guys. So we kind of, I think he sent us down into the basement, and that's where we walked in and met the wrestling guys for the first time. And and that's when the magic started. I think I think you're at. We can actually see you in the front row. Or maybe, you can. Maybe it's Brad in the front row of the video. I have a I have a shaved head at the time. Yes. The most reverent father spoon. <laughs> Actually, yeah, there's, there's the two of you. It's just like it looks like you're the only people attending our session, which isn't too far from the truth. No, there were more people. There were definitely when more. When it people started, there. we were the first. We were the only two in there, they, and they, then it packed up. They, it did pack up. We we did fill a room pretty good. Uh, I'm glad they all showed up for the point. This is actually the point where we started hitting each other. So, so this is 2006. I, actually, I get a lot of views on that video. Yeah, from because of you guys hitting each other. <laughs> I still get a lot of people commenting on it too, saying this is fake. I can't believe they're doing this. And like, you realize it's only 2006. 
<laughs> you guys are a little bit late to the show on this one, but yeah, yeah, exactly. That was that was a good time though. It's, I really enjoyed Pocket, and that's when I learned about. I think you guys had Pocky at that one too. Uh, it was at the Pocky. Yeah, I see Pocky on the, the table. Second there. one, I know I you guys had. I definitely see Pocky at the table. And one week, one one year when we sponsored, we gave it away in, in the gift bags. Oh, did you? Yes. I, I was like three or four ish. I, I don't know. I never got it. Anyways, this is your awesome cast. Uh, you can join us here live at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You tell me what number what what number that was. was that was that was five. Okay, that was that was Podcamp five. Did you miss Podcamp five? I was there. I have the sweatshirt. Nice. Um, but, uh, you can try to set, uh, like I said, 6 30 PM Eastern at, uh, sorgatronmedia.com, awesomecast.com. They got the links right there. You can join us on Twitter at awesomecast. And of course on Facebook and Google plus look up awesomecast, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, and Spreaker, and all kinds of other stuff. Let us know gadgets. So what kind of stuff you're into? We want us to talk about, uh, what do you think about some of the stuff we talked about? We get a lot of good conversation. I know over on the Google plus on Twitter. Twitter, all that kinds of stuff, and we tweet out stories that we're interested in uh, all throughout the week and stuff that you guys tweet us uh, to kind of keep it known, kind of give you an idea of what we might be talking about here on uh, Tuesday nights um, or whenever you listen to our show. Um, I know you have you sent pictures watching it on Chromecast. I do. I do watch it on Chromecast. Actually, I watch it on Chromecast with Teaspoon, mm-hmm. and he thinks it's great. He's like, Daddy, your friends are on TV. And it's, the feed is incredible too. It's because the Chromecast has improved greatly. And you're just like taking the Justin TV feed and full screening it, or I am. Let's see. The last time I did it, it was I just yeah you know, I pulled it off the web and then I I actually have to create. I think I had to create a separate tab for it and then I I cast it that way. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah it, it was looking fantastic. It's been pretty good. We we were casting some um uh, some of the WWF Slam City stuff that just came out. Uh, before we watched Raw the other day, and yeah, it, I'm like, there's no, because there, there, there's <coughs> a bunch of lag mm-hmm. when you first were doing a Chromecast, and it's definitely, it's definitely come around. And I didn't know if it was my home network or what, but it's, it's definitely picked up. I know I did have it full screen with, without any of the the rest of the Justin TV stuff around here, but it's, I played around with a couple different settings, so who knows what the last one was awesome. that worked for me. Awesome. Um, so let's get started with the awesome thing of the week. Um, I, I Chilla, let's go with yours because I feel like mine's going to be a little disappointing because I kind of screwed it up. So I think I brought up a, a multiple times on the, the the awesome cast going through and trying to like hit up multiple social media sites. Um, and I, I think I, we've kind of picked each other brain each other's brains about you know do I post to Twitter and then let some Facebook plugin, grab my twi- Twitter feed, and then how do you cross post to Google Plus, etc. So there was actually an article about companies that are going to be like the six major breaking companies at Macworld this year. Okay. And this company actually caught my eye, and they weren't even one of the top companies listed out there. But it's called Every Post, and what it does is it lets you cross post. Across Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, Tumblr, LinkedIn, and Dropbox. Oh, wow. Then they also have some things where where you can, like, it'll give you warnings to show you you're over your 140 character limit. It'll auto resize photos. Like, you can actually set photo size based on, like, one megapixel, one through five megapixels. So it'll automatically resize all your pictures. Like, it just seems like a really cool app now i'll be honest with you i downloaded it on the way to work and or on the way home from work today and didn't get a chance really to test it yet Mm -hmm. but it seems like this is going to be my new way to kind of post cross post so if i want something to go out to every social media outlet and i know i'm i don't know what you do as of today, uh, I am still You're, with Hootsuite. Okay. I'm still paying for Hootsuite. Um, uh, now, I like it. It it gets a lot of scheduling work done for me, especially on like you know, like I said, I worked for some clients where they're like, "We want you to work on our social media one day a week." Mm-hmm. It's like great. I can't leave your social media quiet the rest of the week, so I auto made everything else just because that's the form of the job. Uh, my issues with Hootsuite. Um, as we come along, I don't feel like it's keeping up with all the social media. I noticed just more recently they're actually doing the we'll make the link go away to the image when we post to Google Plus and Facebook, like that kind of stuff. Um, I wish I had options to tag people when I post through it 
Like okay. I would have loved to like like today say you know, I, I actually I think I was posting about Doug being on here and I would have loved to tag him in those posts. But you know then I have to go in and to each individual one and do it because mm-hmm. um, I think there's a lot of value in that. You know then he gets to see it and he gets to share it and, and then that whole kind of circle completes and it's, it's just you know just hard to automate that. Um, so I, I feel like. It's done a lot. It's kind of becoming the constant contact, I think, of social media mm-hmm. application. As in, like, and for those that haven't, Doug's Doug's laughing at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, what I'm talking about, right? I do. You, you I, just... I've worked with, I've worked with constant contact before, and I've worked with some other services. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've used Chipmunky and a few others, and I'm also a paid Hootsuite person, mm-hmm. and I love Hootsuite. I have a lot of problems with it. I'm finding out mm-hmm, mm-hmm. being someone who has to now schedule a lot of stuff. And like, if I want to, if I schedule, my, if I do the, uh, the auto scheduler and I know it's going to go out to Twitter and Facebook and Google plus and LinkedIn and everything else, I can't have it set to automatically email me a message. I have to turn off the auto timer, set the email, then go back and set it again as the auto timer. Oh, so like a notice to say, Hey, this sent out. Yeah. I didn't even know that was in there. Yeah, so if you take off the auto timer, it'll pop up with the time to send your post, to schedule your your tweet or whatever you're going to do. You can actually select email me a notification. But if you have it set up on the auto, I was hoping that the feature would be there. And if somebody from Hootsuite is, is watching right now, that'd be great to let me know how to do it. Um, you have to go back in, turn the auto off, hit the notification for the email, turn it back on. And it's just, it's like it's just an extra step that's a pain in the butt. Oh, this, I, I, you know what? I never noticed this here. <laughs> you know, right here under the time, I guess there's an email me because I have the Ho- Hootlet thing, which is, this is nice because I can just, even like like tweeting pages or I just do this as quick access to Ho- Hootsuite. Like if I'm like, I want to tweet something, I'll just hit that, pull it up, pull over whatever account and everything's listed and I'm good to go. So um, yeah, it, it's 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 kind of gotten like too big for its own good. Like constant contact is kind of the email I think side of this because mm-hmm. one of the clients uses it and actually somebody else is starting to work on it thank god and and he swears at it every week um didn't they get bought probably I, I think they know. got I thought mm-hmm. constant contact got bought but oh. but versus for my own stuff here for server Charm media I'm using mail mail chimp and it's such a nicer experience and they're updating it it keeps moving and there's been like probably one major update in constant contact since I first started using it in like 2011. Um, and there's just too many like formatting issues and everything. But but anyways, back to this, like I feel like Hootsuite is just like, just feels, it's not fun to be in, right? Like when I want to just watch social media, you know, through the rest of the day, I actually have um, TweetDeck set up most of the time. That's what we messed it up. It's this. just like, like when during the day, I have my main accounts for the podcast, for all that kind of stuff, and this is what sits in the secondary monitor is 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 is, is TweetDeck. It just looks better. It, it it refreshes more on its own. I just have you know just issues of the with the Hootsuite versus this. So, well, it takes a while for the Hootsuite feed to update too. It's not as the refresh isn't as constant as TweetDeck is, which is why I still love TweetDeck. Because I can keep following conversations. Hootsuite, I kind of get lost because it's in bulk. It is. It is. And, and the difference is Hootsuite is one of the few that survived the um, the um, 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 API calling of a couple years ago with Twitter. And, and TweetDeck is actually um, Twitter-owned now. Mm-hmm. So, And they've actually been killing it off certain platforms, which kind of – like I really would like to get it on my phone and iPad and stuff. And you can't do that anymore. So I was fortunate where uh, with my, my previous employer – I had a Hootsuite Enterprise account, Oof. and let me tell you, the toys on that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's because we it's... had major announcements coming out, and they said, "Look, if you guys need our help, let's get this thing up and running." So I, I got to play around with that, and the stuff that you can do is disgusting. But yeah. also, you got to have uh, quite a few tens of thousands of dollars to do it. Yeah. But it's it's cheaper than Radiant Six, mm-hmm. and it's cheaper than Adobe uh, Adobe Social. And it, it is slick. What is Radiant? So Radiant's just another Radiant social Six program? is another. It's one another one of those programs similar to TweetDeck or similar to uh, Hootsuite. We're getting high level social media mm-hmm. in this conversation, by the way. <laughs> where you can, uh, or you monitor the conversations that are going on, but also you can set up triggers so that if somebody, if you're say you're working for McDonald's 
if somebody mentions Burger or mentions Burger King or if they mention McDonald's, Big Mac, something like that, somebody will get a notification saying these people are talking about you. And you could also have it set by what their clout score is, how many followers they have, on what platform. Like it, you can really have it fine tuned so, to the. So that's you how can, if I, if I had like three thousand or four thousand, five thousand, you know followers i'm on a threshold say i start talking i start trashing uh comcast mm -hmm. that's why comcast is on yes but they can also use it they also use it to score call centers will sometimes use it mm -hmm. so you'll get you'll get when you call in to a call center they'll say like they can actually figure out your penetration if if you were to complain about their customer service so they may bump you up in a queue like they'll they, they combine like your clout score how many followers you have on twitter how many friends you have on facebook they can they can quickly figure out what your internet net worth is and then and then go from there on how they're actually going to treat you in fact i know of a few local higher local companies that they have profiles set up of people so they know that if you know you you are an influential person so yeah if you're going to complain They'll know to listen to you. That's why Leo Laporte always gets the best service when when something comes well, and up. And this was one of the companies they brought up when when he had called Apple. Yeah. And they kind of gave him a, a fluff off at first. Yeah. They, and they said, well, they must not use Radiant Six. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. So so I, I'm like this every post. I want to try it out, uh, kind of see if it's a little better. But it, it looks like it's mostly like a phone play it looks like it's an app play it doesn't look like it's a i can sit down it's my command center kind of thing but it could be a nice replacement for the hootsuite phone i uh, see the other thing with hootsuite why can't i get all the google plus and everything like i can do my facebook twitter nothing else mobile so i, I get i get kind of split up on that as well the other issue i have with facebook mobile is you can't preview your post like for a facebook post you don't get that image that pops up and every like all the other nice little perks of doing it doing it on the web it's very, I mean, it is text-based. It is your phone, but it's still an app. You should still be able to see what you're going to publish out there. I, I don't like the sharing is so different. Like, I just want to share this to a group or share this to one of my pages and, and like, a post that's already there. And, and I don't get all those options. It's just a share now. You have another option. It, it, it seems kind of weird that they strip out, especially since so many people, I think, specifically use the mobile at this point. Mm -hmm. And you're not giving them, like, half of the features you are on the, the desktop one. It, it I, I think... I think they're kind of missing the boat there. Well, it's, I, I think a lot of their focus too is on the the higher tier clients mm -hmm. when you're talking about Hootsuite. And it's like I said, I've talked to those guys. I've talked to sales guys. One of them is I, I consider a good friend now, and and he's told me some of the stuff that we've been working on, and you know how it's how would it impact other businesses, mm -hmm. and it, it's amazing. So it's they have this top tier you know client base. And they do have a product for other people to kind of get them used to using their product, so that if and they're, somebody like me has the situation, you know, is in the yeah. situation to purchase it. I know they're happen. really big on education. I actually yes. just signed up because um, I, I joined a partner program to try to sell, resell it, you know, to, to clients or, or as part of the podcast or something. And I really haven't capitalized on that, but you get you get kind of in, invited in on a lot of these webinars or opportunities to. <laughs> pay to be in some other ones and I actually like signed up for one next week um i'm like yeah let's just see what they're talking about they had one with gary vaynerchuk a while ago mm -hmm. so um it, it, they're really good about that social media education and, and, and reaching out for that kind of stuff their so. their university program is excellent yeah it's uh, so I, I will give them credit they do have some very good products and that's why i think i still stick with hootsuite is their customer service has been phenomenal even just as an end user and also as someone who is you know upgrading to enterprise uh, the stuff that I saw that we could do with Enterprise was amazing, and also just it's the stuff that they provide for free, like so with the some of the university things, with the you know having Vaynerchuk and other people on. Yeah, Vaynerchuk. 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 I should know that I've got his books. I still need Vayner. to read. I still need to read the new one. I'm waiting for the audio book. I got. I got to get his his flair on everything. You know. I don't know if I can listen to that audio book. Really. <laughs> It's it, great. The reason, no, well, no, I like hearing him talk. The reason for it is a lot, there's a lot of examples in the book. So he'll talk about like two or three pages about Facebook and why it's awesome, why you should be on. And already some of the stuff he's talked about. Is so many been, times. The great thing is because like, okay, I'm going to stop here. Now, when I wrote this, sex and such was happening. Now this is not the case. Right. Like you get the like updated clips. I was like, you, you talked about how some of the stuff with Facebook, when we talked the other mm -hmm. day, it doesn't even apply anymore from the book. Yeah. And it just came out in what, November? In fact, when I when I got the book in, I believe I had it in December. And this is right, right jab hook we're talking about. Right. Right, left, yeah. 
jab, 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 right hook. Oh, because he's he'll probably hear this somewhere in the back of his mind and go, someone just mentioned my book. Uh, the thing with I, that I would love to hear him read though is his description of why people suck. <laughs> like there are sections where he bashes. He also like the company page, and it'll be like Rolls Royce or somebody, and he's like this this Facebook post sucks, and here's why you suck. I want to hear him say that because he gets so passionate about it. There is an audio CD out. How is there an audio oh. CD but not an audible yet? What's going on? Here? Come on, Gary. What's going on here? Maybe it's in my library. I can grab it from the library. But yeah, good stuff. I I still think you listen to the audio version of Crush, his first book. And if you're not ready to just throw down and do the thing that you want to do, like you know, company wise or or you know whatever, using social media, it, it, it's it's such a great cheerleader experience. Um, I, I, I know several people have listened to that and just like, I want to do something. Now. I've re-listened to it. I've never re-listened to a book other than that one. So I could hear his voice when I was, because you were the one that got me into that book, that one. And then I picked up the thank you economy, which I, eh, it was okay, but it's crush good, it. Some good ideas. Crush it though. Oh yeah. my God. I could hear his voice in my head as I'm reading this entire book. I don't read books. They bore me. I, I'll read tech manuals, whatever, but actual books, I just, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I can't sit down, but that book. I finished within, I think, a couple days. I just I couldn't put it down. Awesome. So I, I have an app here. I, I, I heard about it Monday. Actually, I heard about this on NPR because uh, uh, the, the, my carpool buddy likes NPR. We put it on, and they were actually talking about Google Now and predictive technology, uh, that kind of stuff. And they brought up this company called MindMelt. Have you guys heard of this? Um, it's weird. I snagged it. Unfortunately, I only have an iPad 1, and it only works on iPad. The idea of this is you sit there, and, and it looks like you kind of have to bring people in a conversation um, in the app, which really kind of limits you. But as you're having a conversation, it's going to actually bring up information as it listens to your conversation, us talking to each other. Um, and then it starts kind of and as is shown in the example, if you're on video, uh, like they're talking about the Golden Gate Bridge, it brings up a bunch of articles and social media and pictures and all kinds of stuff from the Golden Gate Bridge. I think we should try this next week on the show. I was almost going to say, hey, do you have your iPad today? So, I think I think we should do a follow up. To, this is really interesting. To, will it archive it, too? I, I'm, I, that's what I'm wondering. I think it kind of does. Because, yeah, I think it organizes and archives your thoughts. Because they were talking about they talked about this and they were doing an interview with a. Uh, uh, Om Omalik from uh, Gigom mm -hmm. uh, about this kind of technology, and they were using this as they were doing the conversation, and they talked about the stuff that was popping up. I'm like, oh, I gotta look into that. Um, it's a four dollar app. It's very restrictive. It's four dollars to get into it. It only works on an iPad, so you know. Um, but the idea of it, if this works, if this is the first step, like I hope this comes to other platforms. Like hopefully, I hope it comes to my iPhone or something. I don't know how long this has been around or anything. Uh, here they're talking about like it pops up Fisherman's Wharf, and there's a bunch of stuff about Fisherman's Wharf, Trader Joe's randomly, um, maps and everything. You can go in there. And there's Google Maps. Uh, it pulls everything from social media. If there's certain people in the conversations, it will pull up all their LinkedIn and Facebook information, um, just from you guys talking about stuff. So, so again, it, it's iPad compatible. It's four dollars on the App Store from uh, expectlabs.com. If you want to look into that, uh, expectlabs.com/mindmeld for this app uh, in particular. Uh, so, uh, go check it out. It looks like it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. So, we I wanted to do the idea like I wanted to like sit here as we're conversing. And then as we talk about Google or Hootsuite or, or something else and have that information pop up. So maybe we get more information to talk, like bring up on the show or maybe, um, you know, we can archive this or, or something. Or maybe this is other, you know, some other feed of information we can kind of share maybe over the video or something. If this was like a really cool thing. I mean, if it was on if it was on a computer that I could like get the capture off of, um, I, I, it seemed like a really kind of you know, fun thing we could uh, get in, into. Looks like it was released about three months ago. So it's, it's fairly new. And it does say organizes and archives your thoughts. Um, so there's, there's a lot of stuff there. So expect labs.com. Doug, you got one. I do. Where's my phone? I'm losing everything <laughs> over here. I do have an app. It's one that uh, actually was just updated recently. Mm -hmm. And since they have, it works now. 
<laughs> well, that's always good. I, I, it's a plus. I, I have to give them credit. Uh, and this is for the Android. It, there is one for the iPhone There's too. The iPhone too looks like. Yes, but I am I the only one with a Droid? Does everybody have iPhones? I, I got a I got a tablet. I'll give you a All right, you can. That's you're good then. You're good to go. You can pretty much see the same thing. Um, so the app that I have is Shoebox from Ancestry.com. And as more people under the age of, I don't know, 65 are doing family trees now, myself included. Because <laughs> when I go to the library to do genealogy stuff, uh, the lady looks at me like, are you serious? Because everybody else there is like, it's an older group that usually does this stuff. But I'm full blown like into genealogy stuff right now. So what the app will do is if you're out and about and you, you know, say you're at a cemetery or you're somewhere where you need to take a picture. You find an article in a book somewhere and you, you don't have access to a, a copier or a scanner or anything else. It'll allow you to take a picture of that document. You can edit it in, on your phone and then submit it straight to your family tree to the person that it's associated with. It's kind of shown that here in the video. So you, like you take a picture and it was actually like, like you can kind of see in the background, like it's actually taking the bit of a picture and cropping it out from the mm -hmm. picture you took on the table. And then sees the picture that I'm presuming is doing facial recognition or tagging or something or. You no, know, you have to put who it you select who it's going to be associated with. Okay. Okay. But you could put your information as where you took the picture at, um, the date of when it should be added to. Like for instance, I took one of a, a document that I found of my great grandfather in Germany from 1881. Well, I, I couldn't get that on the scanner to work right. So I just I was like, all right, well, I got the new shoebox app. I'm gonna give this a try, and it came out perfect. And not just perfect, like it, it not just fit my phone, but when I blew it up to zoom in, like I was getting the details now of, like there was something apparently on the back of it that I didn't know before. Mm -hmm. So I could see some of that writing on there. So when I flipped it over, you could faintly see something's there. So kind of working to figure out what it says, but really, and I, I gave Chilla the, the document once, one of the documents I found, and we both kind of looked at it like. Okay, this is really old German. <laughs> like somebody around here is going to be able to figure out how to translate this thing. But it wasn't just the the font that they were using. It's because it was a lot mostly handwritten, so it was tough to tell what letters were supposed to be which. But it, it is really cool with skinny documents, and the the quality has been fantastic. Like especially for zooming in, like it's I could take that to the library then and show it to the librarian and say, okay, here's what this document says. For instance, I also found the naturalization paper from my great grandfather. And I said, here it is. Here's the person who signed for it, but he's not showing up in this book that you have of naturalized citizens in Pittsburgh. Because I had the name of the person who signed for it, she was able to help me look it up. So it's one of those where by looking at you know a full-blown photo of of that document that she was able to help me. Hmm. So it's just another tool to, have, to add for your, uh, your genealogy digging. Now, does this pull into – like Ancestry.com has their own kind of service there like on – ancestry.com right like does this kind of feed into that service yes yeah, so, this, so this will go to your family tree on ancestry okay so you have to have an account on there and so this uh, is like an extended tool of, yes it's the, just that. another tool to help you out uh, i actually used it once when i was up in erie i visited the, uh, the city archives and they had a listing for like cemetery listings so i was able to copy the listings of everyone in my family with using shoebox and then associate that with each of the people that were in there on the fly while I'm at the library. So and this replaces you having to get the, get the document, bring it home, scan it, mm -hmm. something like that. It's just snagging up like this, which is kind of like, that's kind of how I use Evernote is like, okay, I got this receipt. I take mm -hmm. the document version of the picture and it's a pretty good readable black and white photo in the long run and does whatever with the flash it needs to, right. to make sure it's nice and even and everything. Um, it, it sounds like kind of that, version of this for for family tree the other cool thing with it too is a lot of libraries and i guess their genealogy departments um when you go in to use their their microfilm machines which a lot of them still everything is on microfilm mm -hmm. uh, when you go in there and use the machines they're hooked up to these god awful bulky laser printers and you when you make the cut when you make the copy of what's on the screen you don't know how it's going to look when it comes out. It doesn't necessarily look just like that. You have to adjust the color. And every time you do that, you have to keep paying for it. And you have to pay with dimes. <laughs> dimes? I, I, I can't even make this up. 
<laughs> I've been to six libraries. It's like 15 years old. It's like a okay. ditto machine. It's, it's <laughs> bad. It's I think I, I think I sold the HP 5XL back in the 90s, and that's what they're using. Like, it, it's bad. It's probably like the last parallel printer known to man. <laughs> but it's also one of those things where they don't have new microfilm machines to look at these. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what they're, they're kind of stuck with. And I was hoping that you know someone out there would have the technology to, as soon as I, I get that picture that I want to take, scan it, send it to me, email it to me, do something with it. Don't put it out on this 11 by 17 paper that now I can't read because I have to adjust the, the, you know, the darkness level or the brightness level. And sometimes you have to flip between negative and, and how it looks. And yeah, it's just, there, I think there's a lot of good use with this app to help you help a lot of younger people get into genealogy too. Cause once you pick up on your family tree and you discover something, mm-hmm. it's, it's like crack because I totally got sucked into it because we know nothing about my dad's family. And I, once I found that found out that first clue, uh, yeah, I got sucked in and that was like six, seven years ago. Yeah, and ancestry isn't cheap. There is a way behind this. <laughs> oh, here's, here's the here's the hot tip. Here's the hot tip, and this and is the tip of the week. Tip of the week. Th- this is a pretty. This is a good one. If you're getting started out with with ancestry, and I, I've told a lot of friends this, buy the family tree maker. I believe it's the platinum edition, which you can get for about seventy five dollars. I think they still make that right now. The one I have is from 2011, 2012. I bought that off Amazon. I think it was for like seventy five bucks, and you get set. You you get. Uh, six months of the U.S. version for free. So six months access to all their U.S. records. Which is $99 alone. <laughs> if so you go through Android, yeah, so you're, you're getting the Basically, you're getting the, the service for free and you're paying for the software. That one? That's it, yes. So Family Tree Maker, which is, uh, I'm on something called novadevelopment.com and it's like 80 bucks. Yeah, so if you pick that up, you get the six months free and it, so you load it on your machine, but so you'll have the local copy of it, but what you could do is you sync it with your your account online so that you're constantly sharing information. So it will always keep your information up to date on their website. Once you get close to that six months, reinstall the software. <laughs> no way. I'm dead serious. No way. I have not paid for it. Well, okay, Instressory, if you're watching, <laughs> I have not paid for your service in like three years because that, that's what happens. And I'm going to keep doing it. Well, so for it's- educational purposes, <laughs> what are you doing that? <laughs> but it, it is an expensive service, is the thing. Uh, yeah. But there is a ton of information. You just have to get around the hurdles okay, to figure okay. stuff I out. Presume we need to get the old version. There is a new and an old version listed on on Amazon. So, so keep an old machine around. So keep an old machine running. Well, hey, we all got Windows XP. I'm sure we'll talk about that here in a moment. Uh, it runs on my Vista machine that I have at home. <laughs> there you go. This is Windows 8.1, but it's I have a Vista machine that are, it runs uh, fine. Vista on. 7 and XP. We're good to go. <laughs> and the other cool thing with, I believe with that edition, you also get an extra CD to give as a gift. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> What year was this out? It's recent. I, I th- believe it's a recent release. You know, like wow. I said, I think it was 11, 2011, 2000. That seems like kind of, okay, sure. Because that was my biggest downfall with Ancestry is their service is very expensive. Yeah. But if you go to any of the Carnegie libraries, mm-hmm. you can use the service for free. But you can't copy and save anything to your records. You have to kind of write down a paper, take it back. So if you want to, and they have access to worldwide. So if I want to go get German records, I could get it, but I have to write it down. Or I can now use my shoebox app, take a picture of the screen, as long as I don't get a glare. <laughs> there you go. Nice. And the librarian knew what I was doing, and she was like, All right, "Whatever, <laughs> go ahead." Wow. So yeah, there's there's some uh, there's some cool genealogy things going on right now. If so- you want to get into dead people. So we got another awesome thing from our boy Alex in the chat room. Uh, he he actually got a Moto G. He's been very excited because he's joined the the latest generation in, in uh, Android phones. Um, and he's excited because he gets to listen to FM radio on his uh, without using data. I know, Chilla, you had some commentary on this. I said I remember there there was a thing that you could get for your iPod, and I think it was even before the iPod Touch. That would plug in to the 30 pin connector Mm -hmm. and then the iPod mini and nano and whatever would then be able to pick up FM. 
and, and I remember using it for a while and I was like, yeah, this is still FM radio. So <laughs> it's still iHeart radio. I, 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 I don't know. I actually went, I was going to like listen to, to iHeart radio. To, I, I felt like listening to Mikey and Big Bob since they were back from vacation yesterday. And then like I, the guy, little, the guy with me was literally like, why don't we just listen to them on a the radio? It's like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so um, I'll listen to the radio in short stints. But I rarely, I get different commercials. Rarely Honestly, listen. The quality's better. And I don't like for F- what? I don't like FM quality. I, like I can tell the difference. Everything is is that whole like pushing everything to the to the roof, you know, uh, as far as loudness, and uh, it just like wears on me after a while. And uh, even just listening to it on the phone, it sounds completely different. It, it's something about the FM frequency that just like mushes all the audio together. Um, I remember listening to, like, like listening to to thrift shop on there, and you just heard bass, and it's just mm-hmm. all muffled together. And then listening to it, like, hooked through my radio on the iPhone, it's just like, wow, that is a completely different and crisp song, you know. This is going to take me in a completely different direction. Did you see that new, like, iPod type device that's being released by? I can't remember who now. Chat room, help me out. It's like Willie Nelson's backing it and Pearl oh, no, Jam. No, no, no. And um, um, is that the uh, Neil Young? Neil Young. Yeah, yeah. His is they're using like zero audio compression direct it's from the, Studio if Master. You're, if you're upset with MP3 quality <laughs> pl- over the last uh, uh, 15 years, this is the audio format for you. And they're trying to get mass appeal. They're kickstarting it. Um, I think it made its Kickstarter. Sure, I, th- sure. I think. I, yeah, I or it was close. It was either close because it has freaking Neil Young attached to it. So when you you could get like autographed initial devices, like I, I know Pearl Jam did it, Foo Fighters did it. Neil Young obviously did it. If you're really high on the Kickstarter, in fact, I think you get to have dinner with Neil Young. Um, so yeah, if if you're if you're upset about audio, get one of those and, and tell me about it because they're. I'm okay with MP3, but I'm saying that MP3 is crisper to me mm-hmm. in my car radio than FM radio. So I'm not that. Then again, I'm li- li- just so I don't have to fuss with it. I've been listening to things in my car. From my iPhone through the little stand from South Park speaker that came in my loot crate several months ago, because I figured that is just a better situation, and I'm not going to have to worry about the stupid radio tuner, because hmm. um, that's just nerve wracking. Um, but anyways, so, so yeah. can I get dinner with Pearl Jam? I don't think you can get dinner with Pearl Jam out of that. Yeah. The Pono music player is that? It's really called a Pono. Yeah, that's Pono? it. That's it. You're right. Like. Like, it sounds like a joke if you're just saying it. That's why I didn't take this seriously, apparently. He actually talked about it. It's like about triangular it shape. Yeah. Really? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's like a triangle. Is there a site for it? I've got it off uh, the star.com. I used to just search for Pono, and it's. it's wow. That is. That is it's like, like a triangle. <laughs> and then, here. like, the interface is plus, circle, minus. It's like a PlayStation controller one no, type yeah. plan thing. Plan non operation. This isn't the right one. This is about motor. California Department of Motor Vehicles this is not the right thing. No, so, but I mean, it has a really it's, odd shape, so I don't know how well it would work in a pocket. And my question is, is when you get to that um, flawless zero compression audio, like how much space is going to have to be on that thing? Mm-hmm. And how much, are, how much are you well, really going to be able to store on it? Is it using more it? data or is it using data in a smarter way. No, it's That's using more data. Thing. It's a higher it's a it's a higher it's a higher throughput. Okay. So so, so it is it's going to be a bigger yeah. file in the long run. Well, so. Some somebody here just brought up a, a point too on this in this article saying, you know, it's it's great that we're going to have this great high quality, but can your speakers in your car even tell the difference between it? Yep. Well, that's what they were that's what some of the articles I was reading saying like to really get this you're going to have to have a at minimum fifteen hundred dollar headphones and well, if you're Neil Young, <laughs> probably got that. This is something for the audio. But this is something this for is, this is like when they did DVD audio with like fourteen, uh, probably no more than fourteen, I'm sure. Well, super multi-channel, holy crap! Thing. I remember when the Insane Clown Posse album came out on DVD audio once, you know. Okay. And that's all I ever heard about. Um, it was like it was like a thing. Like I think it was the HD DVD areas <laughs> too. So. Um, maybe it was hand in hand. Uh, this is not a mass market thing. 
mass market has spoken, we are fine with MP3s. This is for the Beastie Boys and the Neil Youngs and the other people in the video are complaining about music, but they make music, so they're allowed to, right? So this is a very niche audience. I love that it's called FLAC. Is that free lossless audio codec? Flack's been a thing for a while. Mm. I, I just I love that I love the name Flack. Can you give and, me that in Flack. <laughs> a lot of um a lot of those like kickstarted or or crowd like I, I think even like like Nine Inch Nails album when he was releasing everything online like or Radiohead would have the option for that. I remember when Nine Inch Nails uh the, I think the last mix that they had for fans that could su submit their own music. With the, some of the quality that they have there was crazy. I couldn't even tell the difference with my headphones. Mm -hmm. And I had some studio ones that left over from one of my old jobs, and it's you, you couldn't tell. This thing is a very specific thing. So, hey, real quick, I want to give a shout out to we have a new pizza sponsor. There's some of it left. There's there's some of it left right there. Um, a slice on Broadway, uh, neighborhood pizza here. Uh, they are supporting us and people in the studio, which hopefully we get more people in the studio. It's working tonight, right, guys? Oh, definitely. I'll come back and get <laughs> more pizza. So they're helping out. We've been uh, uh, a great place here, right up the road, uh, here in the South Hills, South Hills of Pittsburgh. Um, you can check them out at uh, sliceonbroadway.com. We were actually earlier on the movie minute. We had Mad Mike, who is from the Bronx. So he knows his pizza, and he was saying it's some of the best pizza he's had. Because um, I said, you know, I want you to compare this because you, you, you're the pizza connoisseur. You got, you got all these these pizzerias up up the place. You know, let me know how does this compare to New York style pizza? And he says it is pretty damn close. Um, and, and definitely give a huge thumbs up to it. Uh, so they're helping to support us here, uh, at least our stomachs for the people coming in here on Tuesday night. Um, and, and we want to support them. So uh, if you go over, first of all, sliceonbroadway.com, give them a shout out. They're really big on social media. Mm -hmm. I fe it felt weird because we were talking to the owner one time and, and you guys know we do the Pizza Pals, which is just a bunch of us here in the South Hills just go and kind of invade the place. We have like 10 people show up and, and like fill the place. Maybe we're the reason they put a plate, the, put a new area upstairs because <laughs> we kind of took we over did the, take it over the entire place. Um, but they're also uh, they're a 2012 winner of the WPXI Best Pizza in Pittsburgh, and uh, nominations are now open at WPXI.com. Uh, so that's going to be going until March 30th, um, and then it's going to go through a whole process. We're going to have a taste, a tasting, and all kinds of stuff. Um, a whole pro uh, four point contest guideline that, they, that you can read all that there um it, it's a crazy uh, uh domain here so our, our address here so i gave you a, a bitly link uh bitly bit dot dot ly slash slice wpxi that's uh bitly slash slice wpxi you can go uh there and nominate them uh show them a little bit of support for supporting us and uh helping out local business here in pittsburgh because we are a pittsburgh-based technology podcast that was the whole point of the awesome cast being one of the flyover state ones so we're gonna support some local businesses that support us and uh the network here so go check them out and they serve beer and they serve beer the way have byob for the longest time right mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I can still go and they encourage me to bring in homebrew yeah so if you want to bring it in that's fine it's tell us what beers you'd pair up with our pizza i'm like really I love you. We got a nice, we got a nice <laughs> line of things that are like BYOB. With that in the Hollywood theater. Oh yeah, it's BYOB is the way to go. Nice. Uh, is the voting flash? <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, WPXI. <laughs> I can't vote. We built it with front page. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's why, powered by you pick them. By the way, I couldn't find the link on a phone. So if, you, if you're listening on a phone, don't go to a computer. You're going to have to figure it out from there. And go to a computer with Flash. Go to a computer with Flash. <laughs> go to your mom's computer and, <laughs> and, and go take care of it. But, but do it for our friends. Do it um, for um, friends. Now I'm going to have to, I'm gonna, as soon as I get home, I pro, I'll, I'll go to a computer <laughs> that I have Flash on. I will absolutely vote. Awesome. And yeah, we hope we, all you guys, too, that uh, listen to the show as well. And get them in there. Make them the 2014. Make them a two-timer. Uh, one thing I'll give them credit for, which a lot of other pizzerias won't do, if you challenge them to make something, they'll do it. Mm -hmm. And they'll take any of their hoagies and they'll turn those into pizzas, which, please, guys, put the gonzo on the main part of your menu. It used to be, though. 
It was always part of it. It was always a Wasn't sub. It? Yes. Oh, okay. It was always a sub hoagie. And the one day the guy said, do you like that? Did you like that? I'm like, well, it was okay. But I was like, it probably tastes good as a pizza. He's like, we'll do it as a pizza. I'm like, really? It's like, yeah, we'll do it as a pizza. I keep forgetting because you guys exposed me to that. And I just like one time ordered take out. Like, hey, can I have a gonzo? Or I think I even said like large gonzo. And I didn't realize that's automatically a sub without saying anything. So I'm like, how did I get a sub? So, but, uh, but no, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, go check them out. Okay, so uh, big news. You know, it's always bothered me that you, if you wanted an iPad, but you wanted a lower cost iPad, you had to get an iPad two. That's not the case anymore. There's a there's there's an untold reason of why the iPad two stuck around. Okay. But let me hear your story, and then I, and then you hear my. I don't have much my more story. of a story. I, I'm I'm happy for this. You know, it, you, you're not stepping back several generations and one with an older connector. If you want to just pick up, hey, I just want an iPad. I don't need an Air. You know, maybe like in my case, I would like to get something that's upgrading me from an iPad One that's mm-hmm. having trouble running on Mind Melt, for instance, um, that I can test newer stuff on there. I'm starting to feel, you know, kind of hampered by it. Um, well, you you can't go past iOS five on. No, yeah, I'm stuck on iOS 5, and even the stuff that I am able to get on it is very crash-prone at this point. I'm, even even to the point I reformatted uh, the second iPad one we had here to say, okay, it's going to have WordPress and a couple of the you know things that so so I can just sit down and just write up some blogging and something that sits on the coffee table. I couldn't put Twitter back on it. I couldn't put Marvel mm. Unlimited back on it. And that's stuff that I use on a regular basis on my on my iPad. So I'm like, I can never reformat this thing because I will lose access to all those apps. Because so, some of them don't trail back. Like you can't like a lot of them do say, hey, we'll we'll download the last version that worked for your thing. But then there's some things like say the WWE uh, WWE app. Now that they started the new network, if you're on an older version, it'll let you download that older version. But it says download the new version. Nothing's going to work. We're oh. going to tell you download a new version that's all this app is going to do until you do that and it doesn't it, it butts up with that hey you need a newer os and it's like well that's not happening so the ipad 2 that's what i heard was kept around actually for the 30 pin connector mm-hmm. and it was because so many schools and colleges and okay. businesses bought 30 pin accessories okay it wasn't necessarily about like oh i have a couple chargers it's oh i bought these pico projectors that are 30 pin that are 30 pin only and that's the reason the two was kept around for so long was because the adoption rate of devices with the 30 pin connector it made the most sense i think now that and i don't know if you remember when lightning first came out the how you had to have a special thing from apple to be able to create lightning connected devices you had to become like a, you had to be a licensed partner yeah you had to be a licensed like partner yeah and now that more companies are licensed for that and there's more devices coming out, I think that's why they're finally willing to abandon the 30-pin population. Yeah, there's, there's enough There's enough out there, yeah. Because the thing about the 4S is still south. So the 4S is your last 30-pin device that I think that you can still buy. Which will be around until probably the fall. Fall. So there's the, you know it, its days are numbered. And which I thought today, which leads kind of into the next story, I thought today we were going to hear the 4S was going to fall and there was going to be no more 4S as well. But I don't think they're going to do that bid cycle like that. Yeah. I really, I, I, that's uncharacteristic. I'm, yeah. But, uh, but no, it's good. So this is the fourth, is it the fourth generation they're upgrading to? The fourth generation they're upgrading to. So it was the first, that was the first fall iPad. So you had the three that came out in the spring. You had the four that came that out the, in that the was fall. The, the surprise iPad. Yeah, it, it it set the it's it changed the life cycle of the iPad to be a fall distribution. It I think they did it for two reasons to bring the the iPad in in line with the Lightning connector on the iPhone, and then to also the there was major well, I don't want to say major issues, but there was some people complained about the iPad three was the being the first Retina display was a little bit underpowered to be it didn't have battery issues it had some lag people would say lag issues i never had lag issues with my ipad 3 what i had issues with was actually my ipad 1 when the ipad 2 came out i started to see lag issues through a ton of games and apps 
from the one to the two. I didn't see those issues going from the two to the three. And I actually never purchased a four. So I skipped the four cycle. And you look very perplexed. Yeah, because there's like, it just, it doesn't really have an iPad listing. It's all iPad Air. So I'm trying to figure out where they, I'm trying to get a comparison. I guess the compare app, iPad, iPad models will probably do it. <laughs> so, now okay. you, so now you have the, but, the top of the line being the iPad Air. Then you go to the iPad 4, then the mini Retina, mm -hmm. and the non And actually, the, the Retina mini, mini Retina is the same price at 16 gigabytes as the iPad 4th generation mm -hmm. with Retina. So it's... Really? That doesn't... Really? Yeah, okay, because yeah, cause the, the new Mini is the same specs as the Air, right? Yes. So Just All you're getting is a okay, smaller okay, screen. Okay, that, that does make so sense. So you're getting the new the new A7 processor, you're getting all that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the biggest change, the biggest difference is when you go back, the uh, the Mini is now, I believe, the equivalent of an iPad 2. Yeah, it's still the A5 processor. Um, yeah. And I think when the iPad 2 first launched, it didn't have the A5 processor. It actually started, I think they started off with like an A4. And then when they decided that when the 3 came out and they dropped the 2 to being still being sold. Well, they, they kind of slid the 3 chip in there They or slid the newer, a newer chip in that in wow. that redesign. Interesting. Interesting. So so your iPads have been realigned. I'm still waiting on my Mac Minis. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm really holding like, out. I'm, I'm, I'd really like to get a second Mac Mini to maybe get some help working around here. But I don't want to buy one now. Because I know it's two, 2012 was the last time they released. There's definitely newer technology. I think it's. I think they're worried. About, I think they, based on how good the pros doing. Yeah. I think you're gonna see a, a, a late spring, early summer. Yeah. And there's there's supposedly something's happening with Intel and the next version of it. I don't think they're doing a huge spec bump to Haswell, but I think they're doing a huge. I think they're gonna try to redo the spec on the. Intel integrated graphics. So that's where I think you're going to maybe they're waiting for that. Because I'm, I'm thinking like the mini with Haswell is going to be on the Intel GMA 5000 line, mm -hmm. which I think when you get into the next rev of that is when you're going to get into the capability to play some of the, the bigger, bigger name graphics games without having to have like an ATI or uh, NVIDIA mainstream chipset. Tell me about, well, you know what? Google Google had some trouble yesterday. Did anybody, Google, did anybody yeah. run into this? <laughs> yeah. Because I know I had a Google Hangout that we do every every Monday at noon that was not able to happen. I had to pull out Photo Booth to get some footage of this thing. To have something. Photo Booth? Photo Booth. It's still better than what they're doing for Hangout quality right now because they really need to upgrade a computer. Um, but that's that's coming. That's a whole other thing. Um, but yeah, so Google Hangout, including the chat, Google Talk part, and then Google Spreadsheets were down yesterday. Did they explain why? I didn't see anything yet. I, I That doesn't mean there isn't anything. But I mean, I have a song for this. Wait, that isn't coming up. We'll work on it. I can't hear it. We'll is it in the headphones? It, it's not in the... It would be in the headphones. But... Now he's going to make us put them on. Now I'm going to make you put them on. Don't be stopped. Don't be stopped. Don't be stopped. Don't be stopped. Grounded. Is this still... Do they still do this, like, new episodes? I don't know. I, just, I had to find the old one for the blog post. Not so you could throw light switch rays. Now let's go break open that glow stick and pour it into Homestar Runner's Mountain Dew. You know, you know there's a hidden... I heard that. Um, Easter egg in this, where if you, I think if you click on the light switch. Oh no no! This is this is just YouTube. Oh, this, oh. this isn't the original Flash animation. You could, you uh, but I mean that's what it made me think about because like I'm like trying to like what do I have here? I have this old ass MacBook. The Windows machine isn't going to help me for worth anything. Um, what what do you do? And and and, and, and it, you know, Doug, we we talk a lot about Google Hangout. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you're scheduled all set for that show? You record on Google Hangout. That's your recorder and your connection you and hope all Skype's this other working. stuff. What's that? You hope that Skype is you hope working. Skype isn't down tonight. You know, uh, I, I mean, and we've had that here. I mean, we just had a tech problem last week where, like, our internet went away, you know. Uh, but we figured out how to – actually, 
One time the power went out here, and we all gathered. It's when we had all the ladies over for a podcast. And we all gathered <laughs> around two iPhones, because I figured, okay, if I have the two of them, then maybe. But one was just good quality wise. It just became an audio podcast and a really bad tech graphic with lightning. Um, Did you talk to it? No. Oh, I didn't even think of it. Well, you wouldn't even be able to do that through a phone. They have a phone app? You call them. <laughs> I forgot they're on a phone bridge. Wait, are they st- are they still around? Look, I, I think oh, this show is on talk show. Yeah, because actually earlier I, I, I found all my stuff on uh, you were on episode fifty phone lickers on five oh, ten twenty twenty eleven, and of this that was the name of this ep- uh-huh. episode. That's the last time you were on, and this is from <laughs> Talk Show. We we host our audio on Talk Show. They're still doing classes and stuff. You on talk about you talk about wow. gamma the, the gamification of apps like it's brand new and checking in for beer. Oh <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was a long time. Ago. Oh, the, wait, 2011. The latest came in from Google I/O and it included tablets and Google TV. <laughs> Remember 2011? iOS iOS <laughs> subscriptions, iOS subscriptions with Condé Nast and. Uh, Sorg talks about the, your first use with Square. Oh, because we probably started the cafe yeah. by then, and we were starting to use it there. Oh, that's right. All right, yeah, Uncle Crappy was in on this one. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right, because I met up with him for the beers that day at Giant Eagle. All right, I do remember this. Oh, one. because they were doing the, the beer machine, right, at Giant Eagle? They had just started the, uh, I think... It was just wine, just wine sales. Are they, yeah, they started the wine sales there. Okay. There's another reason why him and I were going there. It's, we met up and we ended up getting beers, I think. But yeah, they had the, that big, humongous fail of a wine distributing machine in the, the beer section that never worked. Wow. And conveniently shut down right before Christmas. <laughs> nice. Um, mm. But there you go. I mean, I mean and, and we see this again, like Gmail going down. It, and, and I just kind of like uh, I, I kind of positioned on my blog like what do you do the is are you that dependent on these technologies yes they make things easier but if it goes away are you done for the day at that point if I lose the internet we're done uh, yeah if Google goes down we have accounts on uvu and oh there's another one too that we have an account on but and that's that's why i go with the redundancy like sometimes i feel a little weird because like i have my photos upload to three different services mm-hmm. including like icloud google plus facebook uh backed up on a couple other things um and, and i feel a little weird doing it but then i realize well something can happen to one of them so why am i going to depend on just one especially if they just let me upload them pretty much for free you know um i've been considering dropping my dropbox because they just dropped the price for Google Drive to two bucks yeah. for a hundred gigabytes, which is a sick. terabyte for ten. Um, buy Dropbox. Um, it's, uh, but what happens when you know Drive isn't working that day? You know, spreadsheets was a part of this thing that didn't work. Um, what what happens when Drive doesn't happen? It's like okay, that's not working. I'll throw it over in Dropbox. This happens, you know. And what if you're on a deadline and crap, this happened? I, honestly, what I do before a lot of shows is I'll back everything up. Like if we have we have show notes that are usually in. Google Docs. I'll download the local copy of that just in case. Mm-hmm. But granted, if the internet goes down, we're not doing a show. That's just how it's going to be, which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. But if we have interviews scheduled, you know, it's anything could happen on the other person's end too. Mm-hmm. But well, I mean, let's face it: if Google goes down, the world's over. <laughs> <laughs> but even that, there's like, so many a, things. That's a service, though. I, I feel. Right. I feel like Google. You can work around. <laughs> You can. To a point. There, there's different ways to get around it. It might not be as crystal clear or as great as what you had planned. Yeah, exactly. But there, there is be, a workaround. It could be being huddled around an iPhone with you and four girls. <laughs> that would be trouble. <laughs> it was. I think it was. Um, but, you know, back in the day, uh, Sick Puppy and I recorded on a webcam mic. So mm-hmm. We gathered around. Do. It was plastic fifteen dollar radio shack pc oh mic. those things were great that's what we started the podcasting on was that and we were streaming um on wonderful definitely 500k upload uh, <laughs> uh cable modem uh, on our radio server and, and there was all kinds of problems you know um and and the 
Wow, oh, things shoutcast, are... That was Shoutcast, wasn't it? That was Shoutcast. I had a radio that station was there. Yeah, we had that. We had Juggalo Radio. I streamed the Clarks 24-7. Oh, we were definitely not streaming the Clarks. And I had people... I had people... I didn't even, <laughs> that was kind of the first network because I had people in California like broadcasting mm-hmm. on my server sitting in my back room. <laughs> so, and now we're doing this. Um, all right, guys. <laughs> Wait, I, I, we, we're kind of we're going to run long, but I want to talk about uh, Android Wear. That was announced. Was that today? That this happened. So, and I didn't get to read the fine print on this. What it, from what it sounds like, and I'm sure everyone's just making estimates on. It's what a platform. It is. It's a platform, but it's it's based around the concept of a watch. I haven't even set my eyes on this thing. So this is basically, it's a version of Android, right? Uh, that is going to be featured for a watch uh i know lg samsung who funny they're running their own mm-hmm. can, uh, tizen tizen uh version um lg is doing a round one so is the one i saw from this, motorola oh, actually this is motorola i'm looking at so and motorola is actually the first one that i've seen that actually really looks like what you would think of as a watch. So, so, because they've always been sk- square, kind of big. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Thick. Talking about it, show me. Uh, so, design. so what is that? A digital just watch it's face? A digital di- and it's a, it is yeah, it's a digital display. So, and just make it look reaction. like a uh, a watch. Excellent. Right, and if you kind of look at that to to explain what we're looking at, it's a circular watch face of what we're we're completely used to with the. Uh, Minute hand, second hand, hour hand, and then if you see to the left and right, off center of the the main hands, you can have two additional time zones, right on that. There'll be, uh, I think they were saying options for other, other, uh, other time zones on there and other capabilities like you can put notifications in those areas. So, I mean, this is. I've like... seen ones where the temperature's there and it's a picture of. The city you're in with the times. So it sounds like it's small. not trying to do a whole lot in the long run. No, and and if you want my guess, it's probably going to require a Bluetooth connection to a phone. Mm-hmm. Is my guess. Now here's where I think it's going to get interesting. I think this is going to be the second cross-platform watch. So if you're familiar, so. Samsung's is, have always only worked with Samsung devices. I'm sure Apple's is probably only going to work with Apple devices. Pebble and Google, well, Pebble works cross-platform. It works on iOS and Android. There's an app store for both. The Pebble app on your phone actually feeds your device with information. I'm guessing because Google Now is built into the Google app on the iPhone and it can run background app refresh, you're now potentially going to be able to pull now. Now is now going to pull to your watch. Okay. We're in now. Now that was this was then. <laughs> this is now. When will then be now? <laughs> oh, just this it. looks awesome. I, I don't know. Is this this is just the example from Google, right? Yeah, uh, I think this so. looks awesome. Like this doesn't like 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 you know we we kind of position like I, I love the idea of talking about like you know maybe it's what we get in Google Glass sit down this now I want this to come to Google Glass well and that's where my question is going to be so notice their I think the platform is is kind of Android Wear mm-hmm. notice they didn't call it Android Watch so it's not it's not like like when we, when I talk about glass it's like oh it's like we put a cell phone on your on your face right. and, and and really it's doing that same pairing thing it has to be on a network it has to be attached to your phone or something this is taking a watch and adding things to a watch idea rather than taking a cell phone and just moving it to a different place so the other comment was it's it, it it isn't just android as we know it for a smaller screen it's been designed especially for smart watches it's incredibly simple and fast um i'm wondering if is this gonna is google glass going to be a fork of this is this actually a fork of glass or are they just going to end up being the same thing? There's definitely a lot of cross thing? ideas here. There's, there's got to be a lot of cross ideas here. Because when when I when I think of the time that I wore your glass and the way the screen looks up close to your face, I mean, it's the size of a, of a large movie screen practically or a large TV sitting across the room. The same thing with a watch. It's, a, it's just a little bit bigger. Um, my questions, first off, are I'm not – 
too worried about thickness. My question is battery life. Yeah. I've yeah. become I've become okay with recharging my phone every or my phone, my watch every seven days. Mm-hmm. I'm not going. I don't want to have to recharge a watch every ten hours like the original Galaxy Gear. And this, so this will be the first one. That's a nice. It looks like a nice color. It has nice color video animation. I like this maps tie. What's the yeah? What's yeah, what's the what's my battery life going to be? And I'm not wondering because you were we we've been talking about batteries a lot on the show, and I've been seeing. I don't know if it's because I've been searching Amazon for backup batteries and stuff like that. That all of a sudden I'm starting to see more deals come in through email and and different websites. Like all of a sudden every backup battery is like fifty percent off, seventy five percent off. So are we also on the cusp of a battery breakthrough? Mm. And people were dumping the batteries of today. Wow. But don't quote me on that because it's a guess. And maybe this thing's going to be a little bit about better on battery because it is, like, it's not going to be as, I mean, I think it's going to be, it's, they're showing it in the middle of the wrist, so it's got to be, do they have a size on this thing? They, they didn't really have a size that, on any of the sites that I saw, mm-hmm. but the Galaxy Gear wasn't huge. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that big of a watch. I, mean, I got to think about, like, how quick this thing goes and look at mm-hmm. the giant thing. I mean, like Google Glass for everybody on audio. I mean, the, the, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is your battery. It's like a, it's about the size of a decent sized thumb drive. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, this is your battery plus whatever makes the bone conduction work. So maybe, even, like, like half of this is mm-hmm. the battery. So, I mean, you can't stuff more battery into this. You know, there's, there's not much you're working with. I mean, you think they have to put all their radios in there. Compare this to a size of a phone, you know, just like your your surface area. And you got to think, okay, you don't have this giant screen taking up a lot of space. But still, like, a lot of the components in this are in this. I'm holding up an iPhone 5S for anybody that's not, you know, wondering what I'm doing. But, I mean, it's general size of any mm-hmm. of your phones. So, um, and, and concerning, like, well, these are the components that were in this size thing, this iPhone size thing, two years ago, well, Android wise. I, mean, I don't know what the spec bump did to this. This is a glass two, um, but still, you gotta think. You know, it can only go so far. Unless there's that breakthrough you're talking mm-hmm. about. So I'm curious how hot those things are gonna get too. These the things? Wa- no, the watches. The watches? Oh, that's good. That's a good. Point. Well, well, the biggest thing this thing gets hot for updates and video. So. Are you going, you're not shooting video with these things unless you have a crazy no, but one I'm like thinking Samsung. Like, even with my phone, it's after a while of using it heavily, mm-hmm. it starts to get really warm. Well, if you're using this, and one of the examples that they showed was a person walking around with a map or their GPS going, showing them directions. So if you're constantly looking it's not at pulling this, a GPS, but it's not pulling the GPS, that. it's pulling it from the phone. Oh, okay. So the whole idea is they put the basic components in this for to broadcast it well and okay. it's a bluetooth and color display with the connection think of it app. more think of it more of this is a cell phone on my wrist that happens to attach to my phone so i can gotcha. get data it's this is an extension of all the data in my phone now onto this so all you really need is to make a receiver for your wrist it's air it's what's the air it's like airplay but what's the car one CarPlay. CarPlay. This is now play. That's right. Yeah, yeah now play. <laughs> yeah, because even that, you, we were talking about. So the guts, the brains were your phone, your eye device, and it's just plugging that into the dumb system that's in your car. You know what? If if Motorola doesn't get Flavor Flav involved with this, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So every time I see clocks, I keep thinking of him. <laughs> with Android giant clock um he'll wow. do it <laughs> yeah you know he will he needs yeah, the he work is, he, yeah he probably does um anything else we want to touch on before we get out of here guys of the many many stories we hardly got to <laughs> Tech, tedx is coming up tedx grandview Mike, avenue we didn't touch on it this week but obviously xp is going end of life build conference is coming up stay tuned next when's the 27th next thursday not only is it as my wife's due date but Microsoft is supposedly going to announce the new version of um, Office, and it's going to be released first for the iPad, not for Windows. What? No. <laughs> what? You're kidding. Yeah. What? Suppo- so what they're saying is Satya Nadella has, there's something scheduled for next week, 
And that's going to be one of the big things is about cloud and and apps and mo- and mobile. And they're going to move forward with Office for iPad. And it's actually caused huge tech in- or stock increase <laughs> for for Microsoft. So it'll be be interesting to see. I wonder if it'll be coupled. Also, they they've recently replatformed their um, their price plans. They now have Office 365 Personal, which gets you, I think, two licenses um, instead of five. Office was like the only thing that I still enjoyed from Microsoft. And enjoyed? Wait, 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 wait. I, I First, enjoyed. I have a problem. You enjoyed Office? I do because. Do you maybe... do Excel formulas for fun? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Right, Missy, Missy's pointing at herself. It got, it got to admit, it's, it's pretty good. It's gotten better since way, way long ago when I first started using it. I blew my my, my grandfather's mind when he was, he was like, "Well, I'll just I'll just subscribe to the new Office." I'm like, "Okay, look, it'll work on this Chromebook that you got that when you went and got your Windows thing. Oh, it'll work on your Mac you just got because <laughs> the Windows didn't work out for you. Uh, so I agree. I at use, least he doesn't have to worry about that. I use Google Docs for a lot of things, mm-hmm. but when it came to time for making resumes and pretty little templates and everything for different things I was working on, that was great. The stuff I've had to use it for was fantastic, but I, I still edit and do stuff on the fly with Google Docs. Mm-hmm. And I honestly want a reason to use my fart gun. <laughs> Tell so. me about the fart gun. <laughs> Since we talked about this earlier, and people were asking me about it, this is the Despicable Me Too fart gun, fart blaster that shoots out banana scent. And this is uh, this is my favorite toy of being a parent. She definitely has. In fact, we saw Jill when I was getting this. <laughs> they were registering at Toys R Us when I picked this up. My kids love it. I love it. This is a great motivation tool for uh, for kids to get potty trained. But what's not cool is when you're on an important phone call and your three-year-old comes up behind you going. Welcome to my world. And there's a blog post about this. Yes, there, there's a video on, on my blog of Teaspoon, who's five, having just the field day with it. And it lights up too at night, so it's yeah. So there you go. That, that's my fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And we end on the fart gun. <laughs> Always we end fart on jokes. the fart gun. Uh, Doug. That was my hat tip to to Dutters. At Douglas Derrida <laughs> on the Twitter. Plug what you wanted to plug, sir. Should I drink that dot com? Listen to us. That'd be fantastic. We talk about beer and stuff. <laughs> A lot of beer, though. We invite you to uh, to join our our live broadcast. Uh, we usually let people know a few days in advance when we're going to do it. We'll let you know what beers we're going to have. Grab a couple cold ones. Sit back. Talk to us. Uh, DouglasDurda.com. So you can see my blog. And apparently now i got to change a lot of stuff because I'm getting a lot of parents visiting it. So <laughs> <laughs> I got that to look at. Look forward to. And uh, yeah, at Douglas Durda on Twitter. And yeah. At Chilla, John Tachilla on Twitter. That I am. That's all I have. Yeah, we already did the events, didn't we? Yeah, we already did the events. That's where we would let us to the iPad That's right. office. Which led us Build to- conference is going to come up um, and TEDx. There you go. Big ones. And, of course, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters, uh, MikeSorgatron.com. Sorgatron.com for the blog where I talked about you know some of that stuff. I've been blogging a little bit more. I'm going to be writing very soon about my adventures with Pokemon Yellow. I'm going back because I never played that stuff. Uh, we'll talk about that on Boss Battle here tonight coming up next. If you're joining us live at SorgatronMedia.com or AwesomeCast.com or any of the sites you got links to the live stream where you can join us in the chat like Alex Cars did, like Crazy Kraus has been all night, like, uh, I don't know, who else is in there? Uh, I just see Chilla, and he's here, so that doesn't count. <laughs> um, Chachi is in there, uh, Wheels... Um, all kinds of people join us. Juggalo John joins us frequently. I think I see the top of his head in the icon there. Um, who he just got? He just got a new phone. He's joined us. Remember the last time Juggalo John was on the show? He had like a flip phone or something. Okay. And I think he just finally joined the like smartphone revolution. I saw him tweeting on the account. So so please with that. Uh, he's at WPAG WPAJ Juggalo John. If you want to go uh, congratulate him on his new phone uh, and all that. Um, and of course, like I said, we're live here every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. And uh, check out all this stuff. We have, we talked about a lot of products, 
so there's going to be a few Amazon links on uh, awesomecast.com. We also added a banner up there if there's anything else. Just if you're buying from Amazon anyways, go click on that. Support the show. We get a little bit of kickback of that, I guess. I don't know. We're just kind of starting it. Um, so uh, we're experimenting dollars. that. What's that? You said one billion one, dollars. I wish. You know, go buy everything. Go buy everything <laughs> that we talked about. Go buy the, game, the Vaynerchuk book through there. We'll put a link up for that. Um, I'm going to find that fart gun on Amazon. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Gary V <laughs> will come over here and hug you for what you just said about <laughs> buying his book. He put, probably will. He probably will. He's going to call you right now. We'll tweet him. He will call you within 20 seconds. Put the Ancestry app. Or put app. the Ancestry yeah, app. Yeah, the I, on there. I want to specifically put the old version of the Ancestry app on oh, there. There goes my chance of ever working for him. But. There you go. <laughs> if anyone needs a social media manager. <laughs> and if anybody needs a social media manager, Doug's looking. Doug's looking to help you. And if you, uh, you make or sell beer, that's always a plus. I can help you with that, too. <laughs> Kind of a nice uh, little mix of both worlds. But if you don't, hey, I'm not going to hold it against you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so with that, thank you to our awesome chat room. Oh, hey, also, uh, uh, we're on the YouTubes, we're on the Facebooks, we're on mm-hmm. iTunes, whatever I said at the beginning of the show. I don't know. I lost my, all my notes here. Thanks for Missy for filling in, helping us with the notes and the live tweets and everything. Hi, Missy. Hi, Missy. Hi, Let's Missy. That. Nobody can hear you wave. <laughs> You're not even on a microphone. Okay, (laughs) anyways, thanks again. Slice on Broadway for the pizza. And thanks for our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.